No way, mom. I can't marry a village girl who sells vegetables. I have worked hard to build my life here in the city. And I need someone who matches that. Isn't his eyes narrow slightly? A firmness creeping into her voice. Alice is not just a village girl, Onyeka. She's a university graduate. And she's only selling vegetables because she hasn't found a job in her field yet. In the beautiful town of Ezike, where the sun always seemed to shine a little brighter and the people lived in close-knit harmony, there was a sense of peace that wrapped around the community like a warm blanket. Ezike was not a big town, but it was rich in culture and tradition. The houses were neatly arranged in rows, with colorful flowers blooming in the front yards, and children could often be seen playing in the streets, their laughter filling the air. In this charming town lived a girl named Alice. Alice was the kind of person who made everyone smile just by being around. She was full of life, with bright eyes that sparkled like stars and a smile that could light up the darkest room. Alice had always been a bright and energetic girl. She was the first child of Nai Ezenwata and Mama Alice, who were well respected in the town. Her parents were hardworking and kind, and they had taught Alice the importance of family love and perseverance. Alice had two younger siblings, and she loved them so much. Growing up in a large family was not easy, but it was filled with love and laughter. Alice had always been a good role model for her siblings. She would help them with their schoolwork, play games with them, and tell them stories that made them giggle with delight. Her parents had high hopes for her, and they knew she was destined for great things. When Alice was old enough, she went off to the university. Her parents and siblings were so proud of her. They all believed that Alice was the key to a better future for the family. However, sending Alice to the university was not easy for her family. The little money they had was barely enough to cover the fees. Her younger siblings had to pause their own education so that Alice could continue hers. It was a sacrifice they were all willing to make because they believed in her so much. Nai Ezewata would often say, Alice, you are our star. We know you will shine brightly and bring good fortune to this family. Alice would smile and reply, Papa, I will not let you down. I will work hard and make you proud. Mama Alice, who was always gentle and nurturing, would hug her and say, My daughter, we know you will do great things. Just remember to stay humble and kind. Alice took these words to heart. She studied diligently at the university, determined to succeed and repay the love and support of her family. However, life doesn't seem to always go as planned. After years of hard work and dedication, Alice finally graduated from the university. The day of her graduation was filled with joy and celebration. Her family came all the way from Ezike to attend the ceremony. Nai Ezenwata and Mama Alice wore their best clothes, and Alice's siblings were beaming with pride. We knew you could do it, Alice. Her younger brother Chidi exclaimed as he hugged her tightly. Alice laughed and ruffled his hair. Thank you, Chidi. This is just the beginning. Mama Alice wiped away tears of joy as she hugged her daughter. Alice, my heart is full today. You have made us all so proud. But after the celebrations were over, and Alice returned to Ezike, reality set in. She had graduated with honors, but finding a job was proving to be a challenge. Day after day, she sent out applications and went for interviews, but nothing seemed to work out. 
she moved from one company to another, hoping that she would soon find something. But every door seemed to close in her face. One evening, after another unsuccessful day of job hunting, Ali sat with her parents in their small living room. The room was cozy, with pictures of the family hanging on the walls and a few chairs arranged around a small table. The soft glow of the evening sun filtered through the window. Alice, how was your day? Nai Ezewata asked, noticing the tired look on her face. Alice sighed and shook her head. Papa, it wasn't good. I went to three different companies today, but none of them had anything for me. Mama Alice reached out and held her daughter's hand. My child, do not lose hope. We know how hard you are trying. Alice nodded, trying to smile. I just want to be able to help you and the others. You have all done so much for me. It's my turn to give back. Her father leaned forward and said, Alice, listen to me. We are proud of you no matter what. You are doing your best and that's all that matters. We are a family and we'll get through this together. Alice felt a warmth in her heart. Her family's unwavering support gave her the strength to keep going. But she also knew that she couldn't keep waiting for something to happen. She needed to take action. One night, as she lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, an idea began to form in her mind. She thought about the bustling market in Ezike, where people came from all over to buy and sell goods. She thought about the vegetables she had seen at the market, fresh and colorful, and how they were always in demand. The next morning, Alice woke up with a renewed sense of determination. She went to her parents and shared her idea. Mama, Papa, I have been thinking, since I haven't been able to find a job, maybe I can start something on my own. I was thinking about selling vegetables at the market. Nani Ezenwata looked at her thoughtfully. Selling vegetables? That's a good idea, Alice. It's honest work, and there is always a need for fresh produce. Mama Alice smiled encouragingly. We think it's a wonderful idea, my daughter. You have always been smart and hardworking. We believe you can do it. With her parents' blessing, Alice decided to start her own small business. The next day, she woke up before dawn, her heart pounding with excitement and a little bit of nervousness. She quickly got dressed and made her way to the market, where she bought vegetables in bulk at a wholesale price. As she walked through the market, she could feel the energy around her. People were setting up their stalls, arranging their goods, and preparing for the busy day ahead. The sounds of vendors calling out their prizes and the smell of fresh produce filled the air. Alice bought variety of vegetables, tomatoes, peppers, onions, and more, and carefully loaded them into a basket. She then hurried back to the local village in Ezeke, where she set up her small store. When her siblings saw her, they were amazed. Alice, you are really doing it, Chidi exclaimed, his eyes wide with admiration. Alice smiled and said, yes, Chidi, this is just the beginning. We are going to make this work. Every morning, Alice woke up very early and rushed to the market where she bought fresh vegetables. She would then return to her store where she arranged them neatly and waited for customers. The local market was always busy and soon people began to notice Alice and her fresh vegetables. Alice continued to work hard, dedicating herself to her small vegetable store in the local market. Each day, brought new challenges but also a new reward her siblings chidi and Mama were always eager to help they knew how much alice had sacrificed for them and they wanted to support her in any way they could chidi pass me the basket of tomatoes alice called one morning as she arranged the vegetables at the store here you go alice chidi replied lifting the basket and setting it down beside her Mama. Who was just as enthusiastic was already busy arranging the peppers sister look how fresh these are the customers are going to love them alice smiled at her siblings 
Thank you both for helping. I couldn't do this without you. The three of them worked together like a well-oiled machine. Alice would greet customers with a warm smile and a friendly word, while Chidi and Ma helped with the sales. The customers quickly grew fond of the trio, and it wasn't long before Alice's store became one of the most popular in the market. Your vegetables are always so fresh, Alice. One customer remarked as she picked out some onions. I always come here first. Thank you, Auntie. We do our best to bring only the best to the market. Alice replied, her smile widening. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Alice's hard work began to pay off. The money she earned from the store was enough to cover the family's basic needs. And more importantly, it allowed her siblings to return to school. One evening, after a long day at the market, Alice gathered Chidi and Ma in the living room of their small home. The room was simple but cozy, with a few chairs and a table where the family often sat together. Chidi, Ma, Alice began, her voice filled with emotion. We have saved enough money for both of you to go back to school. Chidi's eyes lit up with excitement. Really, Alice, we can go back to school? Alice nodded, her eyes shining with pride. Yes, Chidi, you both can continue your education. I know how much you have missed school, and now you don't have to wait any longer. Mma clapped her hands in delight. Oh, sister, thank you so much. You are so grateful for everything you have done. Their parents, who had been listening from the kitchen, came into the room. Naya Zenwata placed a hand on Alice's shoulder. His eyes filled with gratitude. Alice, my daughter, you have brought so much joy to this family. Your mother and I are so proud of you. Mama Alice wiped a tear from her eye as she hugged her daughter. You have done well, my child. You have taken care of your siblings and you have kept this family going. We thank God for you every day. Alice felt a warmth in her heart as she hugged her mother back. I'm just doing what I can, Mama. We are all in this together. The next day, Chidi and Uma prepared to return to school. Alice helped them get ready, making sure they had everything they needed. As they left for school, their faces were glowing with happiness. Study hard, both of you. Alice called after them as they waved goodbye. I will be here at the store when you get back. We will, Alice. Thank you again, Chidi shouted as he ran down the road with Uma by his side. With her siblings back in school, Alice focused even more on her store. She knew that the money she earned was crucial for her family's well-being. Every morning, she would wake up as early as 4 a.m., long before the sun rose. The air was cool and quiet, and the town of Ezekiel was still shrouded in darkness. Alice would quickly get dressed, wrapping a scarf around her head and pulling on her study shoes. Alice, you are up early again, Mama Alice would say, and she watched her daughter prepare for the day. Yes, Mama. Alice would reply with a smile. The market opens early, and I want to get the best vegetables before they are all gone. Mama Alice would nod, her heart swelling with pride. Just remember to take care of yourself, my daughter. You work so hard, and we don't want you to get sick. I will, Mama. Don't worry. Alice would say reassuringly. With her mother's words in mind, Alice would head out the door. Her basket in hand, the town was still sleeping, and the only sounds were the chirping of crickets and the occasional rustle of leaves in the wind. As she walked through the quiet streets, Alice would think about her family and how far they had come. Despite the challenges, they had remained strong and united, and that gave her the strength to keep going. When she reached the bustling market, the scenes was completely different. The quiet of the early morning was replaced by the noise and energy of the vendors setting up their stalls. There was a sense of urgency in the air as everyone prepared for the day ahead. Alice would quickly make her way to her usual suppliers, selecting the freshest vegetables she could find. Good morning, Alice. One of the vendors would greet her with a smile. You are always the first one here. Good morning. Yes, I like to get an early start. Alice would reply. 
and she carefully examined the produce. These tomatoes look great today. I will take a basket of them. After gathering all the vegetables she needed, Alice would make her way back to her store in the local market of Ezike. By the time she arrived, the sun would be rising, casting a golden glow over the town. She would quickly set up her store, arranging the vegetables neatly and making sure everything was ready for the customers. As the day progressed, the market would fill with people. Customers would come and go, each one greeted with Alice's warm smile and friendly words. The store was always busy, and Alice hardly had a moment to rest. Thank you for your business, come again, Alice would say as she handed the customer their purchase. By the time the sun began to set, Alice would be exhausted but satisfied. She knew that every vegetable she sold brought her family one step closer to a better life. At around 5 p.m., she would begin to pack up her store, carefully storing any unsold vegetables and tidying up the area. When Alice finally returned home, she would be greeted by the comforting smell of Mama Alice's cooking. The house was filled with the delicious aroma of stewed vegetables and freshly cooked rice. Welcome home, Alice. Mama Alice would say, handing her a plate of food. You have worked hard today. Eat and rest now. Alice would take the plate with gratitude, feeling the weariness of the day settle into her bones. Thank you, Mama. The food smells wonderful. As she ate, Mama Alice would sit beside her, offering gentle words of encouragement. You are doing so well, Alice. But remember, it's important to rest too. You need to take care of yourself so you can keep going. Alice would nod, appreciating her mother's concern. I will, Mama. I promise. I will take care of myself. After dinner, Alice would finally allow herself to relax. She knew that another busy day awaited her. But for now, she could rest and recharge. As she lay down to sleep, she thought about her family, her stall, and the future that lay ahead. Despite the challenges, Alice felt a deep sense of fulfillment. She was doing what she loved and she was helping her family in the process. With this thought in her mind, Alice drifted off to sleep, ready to face whatever the next day would bring. Life continued its steady rhythm in the town of Ezeke. The small vibrant community was a place where everyone knew each other and the bonds between families were strong. In this peaceful setting, Alice continued to run her vegetable store with dedication and care. Every morning, she would rise before the sun, make her way to the bustling market and select the freshest vegetables to bring back to her store. Her hard work had become a cornerstone of her family's well-being and her efforts had not gone unnoticed. She, the Anuma, her younger siblings, had settled back into their studies with enthusiasm. They were eager to learn and make the most of the opportunity their sister had worked so hard to provide. Their parents, Nai Ezenwata and Mama Alice watched their children with pride, grateful for the blessings that had come their way. One bright and sunny day, an unexpected visitor arrived at the family's home. It was Ezine, Mama Alice's childhood friend, who had come all the way from the nearby town of Akbo. The two women had not seen each other in many years and their reunion was filled with joy and excitement. Ezine, is it really you? Mama Alice exclaimed as she opened the door to find her old friend standing there. Yes, it is me. Ezine replied with a wide smile, opening her arms for a warm embrace. The two women hugged each other tightly, tears of happiness glistening in their eyes. It had been so long since they had last seen each other, and there was so much to catch up on. Mama Alice ushered Ezine into the house, her heart swelling with joy at the sight of her dear friend. Come in, come in, sit down and rest, Mama Alice said, guiding Ezine to a chair in the cozy living room. Ezine looked around the room, taking in the familiar sights and smells. Your home is just as I remember it, Equi, so warm and welcoming. Mama Alice smiled, feeling a sense of pride wash over her and you haven't changed a bit isn't it it's like 
No time has passed at all. They spend the rest of the day catching up, sharing stories of their lives, their families, and everything that had happened since they last saw each other. Ezine spoke about her life in Akbo, where she had raised her son, Onyeka, after her husband had left her. Onyeka is doing well now, Ezine said with a hint of pride in her voice. He's working in the city and making a good living, but it hasn't been easy raising him on my own. Mama Alice nodded, understanding the struggles her friend had faced. You have done a wonderful job, Ezi. I know it couldn't have been easy, but you have raised a good son. Ezi smiled, though there was a hint of sadness in her eyes. Thank you, Ekwi. I did what I could. Onyeka can be very difficult sometimes. He's proud and stubborn, just like his father. But he's my son, and I love him. Mama Alice reached out and squeezed her friend's hand. You have been strong, Ezine, and you have raised a fine young man. They continued to talk, reminiscing about their childhood days, the games they used to play, and the dreams they had shared. It was as if they were young girls again, sitting under the shade of a tree and whispering secrets to each other. As afternoon wore on, Ezine asked about Mama Alice's family. How are your children, Equi? I remember when Alice was just a little girl, so full of energy and curiosity. Mama Alice beamed with pride as she spoke about her children. They are all doing well, thank God. Alice has grown into a beautiful young woman. She's hardworking and determined. She runs a vegetable store at the market and has been such a blessing to her family. Ezine's eyes lit up with interest. I would love to see her. It's been so long since I last saw her. She must have changed so much. She has, Mama Alice agreed, but she is still the same sweet girl at heart. She will be home soon, and you can see for yourself. It wasn't long before Alice returned home from the market. Her basket empty after another successful day of sales. As she entered the house, she was surprised to see a guest sitting with her mother. Alice, come here, Mama Alice called out with a smile. We have a special visitor. Alice approached the living room. Her curiosity peaked. When she saw Ezine, she instantly recognized her from the stories her mother had told. Good afternoon, ma. Alice greeted politely, bowing slightly out of respect. Ezine stood up, her eyes widening with amazement as she looked at Alice. Is this really Alice? Oh, how you have grown. You were just a baby the last time I saw you. Alice smiled shyly. Feeling a bit embarrassed by the attention. Thank you, ma. It's nice to meet you again. Ezine walked over and gave Alice a warm hug. My dear, you have turned into such a beautiful young woman. Your mother has told me all about how hard you have been working. I'm so proud of you. Alice blushed at the praise, feeling a sense of warmth and comfort in Ezine's embrace. Thank you, ma. I'm just doing my best. As they sat down together, Chidi and Uma came into the room. Having heard the commotion, they were eager to meet the woman their mother has spoken about so often. Uma, Chidi, this is Ezine, my old friend from Apple. Mama Alice introduced them. She's been like a sister to me. Chidi and Uma greeted Ezine with some respect and politeness that Alice had shown. Ezine was delighted to meet them. And she marveled at how well-mannered and polite they were. You have raised such wonderful children, Alice. Ezine said, turning to her friend. You should be very proud. Mama Alice smiled, her heart swelling with pride. Thank you, Ezine. I'm blessed to have them. The afternoon passed quickly as they talked and laughed together. Ezine shared stories about her life in Apple. And Mama Alice told her all about the town of Eziki and how things had changed over the years. The children listened with interest, learning more about their mother's past and the close bond she shared with Ezine. As the sun began to set, Ezine knew it was time to leave. She didn't want to go, but she promised to visit again soon. I have such a wonderful time, Equi, Ezine said as she stood up to leave. It feels like old times, doesn't it? It does, Mama Alice agreed standing up to see her friend off. I'm so glad you came. Please visit again soon. 
Ezine reached into her bag and pulled out a small envelope. She handed it to Mama Alice with a smile. Here is a little something for you and the children. It's not much, but I hope it helps. Mama Alice was touched by the gesture. Thank you, my friend. You didn't have to do this. I wanted to. Ezine insisted. You have always been like a sister to me, and I'm so happy to see that you are doing well. With one last hug and a promise to visit again, Ezine left, leaving a warm feeling of friendship and love in the house. The family gathered together, their hearts full of gratitude for the visit. When Nai Ezenwata returned home later that evening, Mama Alice told him all about Ezine's visit. Ezine was here, he asked, surprised but pleased. It's been so long since we last saw her. Yes, and it was wonderful to see her again, Mama Alice said. A smile on her face. She has been through a lot, but she's strong. She raised Onyeka on her own after her husband left her. Naya Zemwata shook his head. She's a strong woman, just like you, Ekwi. It's not easy to raise a child alone, especially when they have their father's stubbornness. That's true, Mama Alice agreed. But Ezine has done a good job. Onyeka is working in the city now. Though, it can be difficult at times. Ezine doesn't let him get away with any nonsense. The family continued to talk about Ezine and her son, feeling a deep respect for the challenges she had overcome. As they prepared for bed that night, there was a sense of contentment in the house. The visit had reminded them of the importance of friendship and the bonds that held them together. As Alice lay in bed, she thought about Ezine and her son Onyeka. She wondered what he was like and how he managed to balance his pride with his mother's firm guidance. Alice admired Ezine's strength and hoped that, like her, she could continue to work hard and make her family proud. With this thought in her mind, Alice drifted off to sleep, ready to face another day in the town of Ezeke, where life continued to move forward, filled with love, friendship and the promise of better days ahead. A few days later, Mama Alice was going about her usual chores when the phone rang. The familiar ringtone echoed through the small house and she quickly wiped her hands on the apron before picking it up. The voice on the other end of the line brought a smile on her face. It was Ezine, her dear friend. Ezine, what a pleasant surprise! Mama Alice exclaimed, her voice filled with joy. Equi, it's so good to hear your voice. Ezine replied, using the affectionate nickname they had for each other. How are you? How is Alice? And how are the children? We are all doing fine, thank God, Mama Alice said. Her tone warm. Chidi and Mma are back in school, and Alice is working hard at the market. Naya Zemata is well too. How about you, Ezine? And how is Onyeka? Ezine's voice brightened with excitement as she replied. Onyeka is doing well. I actually went to visit him in the city a few days ago and we had a long talk. I I told him about Alice. Mama Alice was taken aback. You did? But why, Ezine? What made you tell him about Alice? There was a brief pause on the other end before Ezine responded. I have been thinking a lot since our visit. Alice is such a wonderful girl and I have always admired her spirit. I thought maybe, just maybe, Onyeka and Alice could be a good match. Mama Alice's surprise deepened. She hadn't expected this at all. Ezine, are you sure? I mean, it's a big decision. We can't force them into something they don't want. What if they don't get along? Don't worry, Alice. Ezine reassured her. Onyeka respects me and he listens to what I say. I believe he will be open to the idea, especially if it comes from me. But of course, I don't want to push Alice into doing anything she's not comfortable with. It's just a suggestion. And if she's not interested, we will drop it. Mama Alice nodded. Though Ezine couldn't see it. I understand, my friend. I will talk to Alice about it and see what she thinks. If she's not comfortable, we won't pursue it any further. That's all I ask, my friend, Ezine said. Her tone soft and understanding. I just want what's best for her children. After they exchanged a few more pleasantries, the call ended. Mama Alice set the phone down, her mind swelling with thoughts. It was an unexpected proposition, 
and she wasn't sure how Alice would react. As she stood there, deep in thought, Nai Ezenwata walked into the room. Who was that on the phone? He asked, noticing the thoughtful expression on his wife's face. It was Ezine, Mama Alice replied, still processing what had just been discussed. She called to talk about something rather surprising. Nai Ezenwata raised an eyebrow. Surprising? What do you mean? Mama Ali sighed, realizing she needed to share the full story. Ezine told me that when she visited Onyeka in the city, she mentioned Alice to him. She thinks they might make a good match. Nai Ezenwata's eyes widened in surprise, and he shook his head slowly. Alice and Onyeka. That's unexpected. How did you respond? Well, I told her I would talk to Alice about it and see how she feels. Mama Alice replied, her voice tinged with uncertainty. But I'm not sure how Alice would take it. I don't want her to feel pressured into anything. Naya Zewanta nodded, his expression thoughtful. You are right to be cautious. Alice is her own person and she should have the freedom to make her own choices. It's important that we don't push her too hard. If she's not comfortable with the idea, we need to respect that. I agree, Mama Alice said, feeling reassured by her husband's words. I'll talk to her tonight after dinner. We'll see what she thinks, and whatever she decides will support her. Later that evening, after the family had finished their dinner, Mama Alice asked Alice to stay behind while the others cleared the table. Alice, my love, Mama Alice began gently. There is something I want to talk to you about. It's important, but please... Know that whatever you decide will respect your decision. Alice looked at her mother curiously, wondering what this important conversation could be about. Of course, Mama, what is it? Mama Alice took a deep breath, then began to explain. Do you remember Ezine, my old friend, who visited us recently? Yes, Mama, I remember. Alice replied with a smile. She was so kind and warm. It was nice to meet her. Well... Mama Alice continued, Ezine called today, and she told me something surprising. When she went to visit her son Onyeka in the city, she mentioned you to him. She's been thinking that you and Onyeka might make a good match. Alice's eyes widened in surprise just as her father's had earlier. Me and Onyeka, but Mama, I have never met him. I know, my dear, Mama Alice said gently. That's why it's just a suggestion. Ezine thinks highly of you, and she wanted to see if there might be something there. But you have every right to say no. We don't want you to feel pressured into anything you are not comfortable with. Alice thought for a moment, her mind racing with thoughts. It was a lot to take in, but she appreciated her mother's honesty and the way she was handling the situation. After a few moments, she smiled softly. Mama, I'm not sure how I feel about this yet, Alice admitted. But for Ezine's sake, I'm willing to give it a chance. I think it would be good to meet Onyeka and see what kind of a person he is. Plus, it might be an opportunity for me to apply for jobs in the city. Mama Alice's face lit up with relief and happiness. Oh, Alice, that's wonderful. I'm so proud of you for being open to the idea. We can arrange for you to visit the city, meet Onyeka, and see how things go. But remember, there is no pressure. If it doesn't feel right, you can walk away. Thank you, Mama. Alice said, feeling grateful for her mother's understanding. I will keep an open mind, but I will also be true to myself. With the decision made, Mama Alice wasted no time in calling Ezine to share the good news. The excitement in Ezine's voice was palpable as she responded. Oh, my Alice, this is wonderful news, Ezine exclaimed. I'm so happy that Alice is willing to give it a chance. I promise you, Onyeka is a good man and I think they could be very happy together. Thank you, Ezine, Mama Alice replied warmly. We are all hopeful, but we will take it one step at a time. Alice will visit the city soon and we'll see how things go. Perfect, Ezine said, her voice filled with enthusiasm. I'll come over next week and we can all go to the city together. I can't wait to see how this turns out. After ending the call, Mama Alice turned to Alice with a smile. It's all set. Ezine will come next week and you'll have the chance to meet Onyeka and explore the city. Alice nodded, 
feeling a mix of excitement and nervousness. I'm ready, Mama. I'll see where this path leads. As the evening drew to a close, the family gathered together, each with their own thoughts about the upcoming visit. While there were still many uncertainties, there was also a sense of anticipation and hope. Alice knew that whatever happened, she had her family's support, and that gave her the strength to face whatever lay ahead. As she prepared for bed that night, Alice couldn't help but wonder what the future held. Meeting Onyeka could be the beginning of something new, or it could simply be an experience that guided her to other opportunities. Either way, she was ready to take the next step with an open heart and an open mind. The next day dawned like any other in the town of Ezeke, with the sun rising slowly over the horizon, casting a warm golden light across the town. For Alice and her family, life continued as usual. She diligently went about her daily routine, tending to her vegetable store and ensuring everything was in order. Yet, there was a sense of anticipation in the air, a quite excitement that came from knowing that Ezine's visit and the journey to the city were just around the corner. Mama Alice, ever the caring mother, was determined that her daughter would be well prepared for the trip. She knew how important it was for Alice to make a good impression. Not just on Onyeka, but also on the city itself, where opportunities might await. So, she busied herself with gathering a few new dresses for Alice, simple yet elegant, perfect for both city life and the more former occasions that might arise. Alice, come here, my child. Mama Alice called one afternoon, holding up a neatly folded dress. I got you a few things for your trip. Alice walked over and smiled as she saw the dress. Oh, Mama, you didn't have to do all this, but thank you, it's beautiful. Mama Alice smiled, her eyes filled with warmth. I want you to be prepared, Alice. The city is different from our little town, and I want you to feel confident. I also got you a new bag for your clothes, some slippers, and other essentials you might need. Alice felt a wave of gratitude wash over her. Thank you, Mama. I will make sure to use them well. The preparations continued, and soon the day of Ezine's visit arrived. The morning was filled with a mix of excitement and nervousness. Alice packed her things carefully, making sure she had everything she needed. Mama Alice had promised to cover for her at the store while she was away, a gesture that reassured Alice as she prepared to leave her family behind, even if it's just for a short while. When Ezine finally arrived, she was greeted with open arms. The warm reunion between the two old friends were heartening to see. But there was also a seriousness in Ezine's demeanor. She knew the importance of this trip for Alice, and she was determined to make sure it went as smoothly as possible. Are you ready, Alice? Ezine asked, smiling warmly at the younger woman. Yes, ma, Alice replied, her heart beating a little faster with anticipation. Mama Alice hugged her daughter tightly before she left. Take care, my dear. Remember, you are strong and you are capable of anything. We will be here waiting for you. I will, Mama. Alice promised. I will be back soon. With a final wave to her family, Alice boarded the bus to the city with Ezine. The journey was long and the scenery changed from the familiar rolling hills of Ezike to the bustling roads leading into the city. Ezine and Alice chatted along the way talking about everything from life in the city to the small details of the day ahead. As the bus finally pulled into the city, it was already late at night. The city lights twinkled in the distance, a stark contrast to the dark, quiet roads of the countryside. Alice felt a mixture of joy and nervousness as they made their way through the busy street, eventually arriving at Onyeka's apartment. When they reached the front door, isn't it knocked lightly? A few moments later, the door opened, revealing Onyeka standing there, looking slightly surprised. Mom, what are you doing here? Onyeka asked, his tone polite but puzzled. Ezine smiled warmly. We have come to visit Onyeka. Aren't you going to invite us in? Onyeka stepped aside, allowing them to enter. The apartment was modern and spacious, a clear indication of Onyeka's success in the city. But despite the welcoming space, there was a tension in the air, a discomfort that Alice couldn't quite place. 
As soon as they were inside, Onika gently took his mother's hand and led her to a corner of the room, away from Alice. Mom, why didn't you tell me you were coming? And who is this girl you have brought with you? Onika asked in a low voice, trying to keep his tone respectful despite his frustration. Ezine's expression remained calm as she replied, Onyeka, I don't need an invitation to visit my own son, or do I? And as for Alice, she's a good girl, hardworking and kind. I think you should consider getting to know her better. Onyeka frowned, clearly displeased. No way, mom. I can't marry a village girl who sells vegetables. I have worked hard to build my life here in the city, and I need someone who matches that. Ezine's eyes narrowed slightly, a firmness creeping into her voice. Alice is not just a village girl, Onyeka. She's a university graduate and she's only selling vegetables because she hasn't found a job in her field yet. She is resourceful and determined. Qualities that should matter more than where she's from or what she does. Onyeka looked away, clearly still uncomfortable with the idea. He wanted to argue further, but Ezine didn't give him the chance. She simply turned and walked back to where Alice was waiting, leaving Onyeka to steal in his thoughts. Ezine's voice was gentle as she spoke to Alice. Come with me, my dear. Let me show you your room. Alice followed Ezine down a hallway to a beautiful decorated guest room. The bed was large and comfortable, with soft pillows and a warm blanket that made the room feel inviting. Thank you, ma, Alice said softly, taking in the room with a sense of gratitude. It's lovely. You are welcome, Alice, Ezine replied with a smile. Why don't you freshen up and then we'll have dinner? Alice nodded and quickly unpacked her things. Still thinking about the encounter with Onyeka, he hadn't even said hello to her properly and his cool demeanor made her feel unwelcome. As she washed up and prepared for dinner, she couldn't help but wonder if this trip had been a mistake. Was Onika really the person she was supposed to consider spending her life with? At dinner, the atmosphere was tense. Onika remained mostly silent, barely glancing in Alice's direction, while Ezine tried her best to keep the conversation light and pleasant. So Alice, Ezine began, smiling warmly. How was the journey? I hope it wasn't too tiring. It was fine, ma. Alice replied politely. Though, she couldn't help but notice how Onyeka's gaze remained fixed on his plate. And how his business at the market, Ezine continued, clearly trying to engage Alice in conversation. It's going well, ma. Thank you. Alice said, managing a smile. Mama is covering for me why I'm here. Ezine nodded approvingly. That's good to hear. You have been doing such a wonderful job helping your family, Alice. I'm sure you will find success in the city as well. Despite Ezine's best efforts, the tension at the table remained. Onyeka's silence was palpable, and Alice couldn't shake the feeling that he didn't want her there. She finished her meal quietly, her thoughts racing. Later that night, as Alice lay in the comfortable bed, she couldn't help but think about the day's event. Onyeka's cold reception had been disheartening, and she wondered if he could ever come around. It was clear that he wasn't happy about the situation, and Alice didn't want to force herself into a life where she wasn't wanted. Does he really not like me? Alice wondered aloud, staring up at the ceiling. I thought this was something he agreed to. But now, it seems like he didn't even know I was coming. If he's not okay with it, then I will just go back home and continue my business. But Alice also knew that Ezine had good intentions. Ezine had spoken so highly of Onyeka and seemed genuinely hopeful that things could work out between them. Perhaps, given time, Onyeka would come to see her differently. Meanwhile, in another room, Ezine and Onyeka were having a serious conversation. Ezine sat on the edge of Onyeka's bed, her expression firm as she addressed her son. Onyeka, I know you are not happy about this, but I need you to give Alice a chance. Ezine said, her tone brooking no argument. Onyeka sighed, running a hand through his hair. Mom, I just don't think... She is the right person for me. She's from the village and we are from different worlds. That's nonsense. Is in a short back. Her voice rising slightly. You may live in the city now, but that doesn't make you better than anyone else. Alice is a good girl and she deserves your respect. At the very least, talk to her tomorrow. 
Get to know her before you make any decisions. Onyeka hesitated, but he knew better than to argue with his mother when she was this determined. Finally, he nodded. Okay, mom. I'll talk to her tomorrow, but I can't promise anything more than that. That's all I ask. Izine said, her voice softening. Just give her a chance. With that, Izine left Onyeka to his thoughts, hoping that her son would come to see the good in Alice. As she returned to her own room, she whispered a silent prayer that the next day would bring better understanding and perhaps the start of something new. Alice, lying awake in her room, also hoped for a better day. She knew that things hadn't started off well, but she was determined to remain open-minded. If things didn't work out, she would return home to Ezeke, where her family and her small business awaited her. As she drifted off to sleep, Alice reminded herself that no matter what happened, she was strong, capable, and worthy of love and respect. The city was a new chapter in her life, and she was ready to face whatever came next with hope in her heart and her family's support behind her. The next morning, Alice woke up before the sun had fully risen, determined to start the day on a positive note despite the cold reception she had received from Onyeka the previous day. She quickly cleaned the house, ensuring everything was spotless, before heading to the kitchen to prepare breakfast. She moved with a quiet efficiency, focusing on the tax at hand, as a way to keep her mind off the uncertainty she felt. It was Saturday, which meant Onyeka wouldn't be rushing off to work. She knew he would likely go for his morning workout, so she made sure that breakfast would be ready when he returned. The kitchen, filled with comforting smells of fried eggs, yam porridge, and freshly brewed tea, Ali set the dining table neatly, placing the food in the center, hoping that perhaps today might be different. Just as she was finishing up, she had footsteps coming down the stairs. Onyeka appeared, dressed in his workout clothes, looking ready to head out. He paused at the entrance to the dining room, his eyes scanning the table set with food. For a moment, curiosity flickered in his eyes as he took in the scene. Alice stepped out of the kitchen at that moment, her heart skipping a beat when she saw him, summoning her courage. She greeted him with a soft smile. Good morning, Onyeka. But Onyeka barely acknowledged her presence. He glanced at her briefly, his expression unreadable, and then turned away, walking past her without a word. The sound of the front door closing behind him echoed through the house, leaving Alice standing there, her heart sinking. He had hoped for some kind of response, anything that would show he was warming up to her. But... His coldness only dipping the egg in her chest. A few minutes later, Ezine came down the stairs, her face lightening up as she saw the spread on the table. Alice, you have done such a wonderful job with breakfast, she exclaimed, moving to embrace the younger woman. You are truly a wife material, 1,000 yards. Alice managed a small smile, trying to hide the sadness in her eyes. Thank you, ma, she replied, though her voice lacked its usual warmth. Ezine, ever perceptive, noticed the change in Alice's demeanor. She frowned slightly, concerned. Alice, is everything all right? You don't seem like yourself this morning. Alice hesitated, not wanting to burden Ezine with her troubles. But when she saw the genuine concern in the older woman's eyes, she sighed and nodded, trying to smile. I'm fine, ma. Just a bit tired, that's all. Ezine wasn't convinced. She reached out and took Alice's hand, leading her to the sofa. Come, sit with me for a moment, she said gently. As they sat down, Isne looked at Alice with empathy. Alice, I know this isn't easy for you. Unika can be very stubborn, but he's not a bad person. He just needs some time to adjust to the idea. Please, don't lose heart. I promise he will come around. Alice looked down at her hand, the weight of Ezine's words settling on her. She wanted to believe that things would get better, that Onyeka would eventually see her for who she truly was, but it was hard to stay hopeful when every interaction with him felt like a battle. Thank you, ma, Alice finally said, her voice soft. I will try to be patient. Ezine squeezed her hand reassuringly, 
That's all I ask, my dear. Give him some time. And don't let his coldness get to you. You're a wonderful person, Alice. And anyone will be lucky to have you. After their talk, they moved to the dining table and enjoyed the breakfast Alice had prepared. Isn't praised the food and complimented Alice on her cooking skills. But Alice's mind was elsewhere. She couldn't shake the feeling of loneliness that had crept in she, since she arrived at the city. After breakfast, Alice cleared the table and washed the dishes. Her movement mechanical and she went through the motions. She still felt tired from the emotional toll of the previous day. So once the kitchen was clean, she decided to take a nap. She headed to her room, lay down on the bed and soon drifted off into a restless sleep. While Alice slept, Onika returned from his workout. His body still tense from the morning's event. As he entered the house, he was greeted by the lingering scent of the breakfast he had ignored earlier. It reminded him of his mother's cooking, the warmth of home, and the love that had always surrounded him growing up. But instead of feeling comforted, he felt a pang of guilt for the way he had treated Alice. Esme was waiting for him when he returned, her expression serious. Onyeka, we need to talk, she said as he walked through the door. Onyeka sighed, knowing what was coming. Mom, I already told you how I feel about this, he said, trying to avoid another confrontation. And I told you last night that Alice deserves a chance, Esme replied firmly. But it's clear you haven't even tried. Why are you being so cold towards her? Onyeka ran a hand through his hair, frustration bubbling to the surface. Mom, I don't want an arranged marriage. I want to fall in love and choose the woman I'm going to marry. I want to make that decision for myself. Isn't his expression softened? But her resolve remained strong. Onyeka, Onyeka Chi, I understand that you want to make your own choices. But sometimes, love grows in unexpected ways. Alice is a good girl, and I believe she could make you very happy if you give her a chance. Onyeka shook his head, his frustration turning into exasperation. Mom, you don't understand. I can't marry a village girl who sells vegetables. We are from different worlds, and I need someone who understands my life here in the city. Isn't his eyes narrow slightly, her tone becoming more insistent. That's where you are wrong, Onyeka. Alice is not just a village girl. She's a university graduate, just like you. She's intelligent, hardworking, and kind. Don't let your pride blind you to what is right in front of you. Onyeka wanted to argue further, to push back against his mother's relentless insistence. But deep down, he knew she was right about one thing. He hadn't given Alice a fair chance. Yet, the idea of being forced into something he didn't choose still grated on him. I need time, mom, Onyeka finally said, his voice softer. I need to figure this out on my own. It's in a side, her determination unwavering. Take your time, Onyeka. But know this, I'm not leaving until you give Alice the respect she deserves. We'll stay until you accept to marry her, or at least give her a fair chance. Onyeka's frustration reached its peak, and he angrily turned away from his mother, retreating to his room. The door slammed behind him, and Izine was left standing in the hallway. Her heart heavy with disappointment. She had hoped that Onyeka would see reason, but it seemed her son was more stubborn than she had anticipated. When Alice woke up later in the afternoon, she felt a bit more rested, but the weight of the morning still lingered in her chest. She knew that staying in this house would only be more painful if things didn't improve. But before she could dwell too long on her thoughts, Ezine knocked on her door and entered, her face full of concern. Alice, my dear, Ezine began, sitting down beside her on the bed. I know things haven't been easy for you, and I can see that you are struggling, but I want you to know that I'm here for you. Alice looked at Ezine, her eyes filling with tears. Ma, I don't think Onyeka wants me here. He's made it clear that he doesn't like me, and I don't want to stay where I'm not welcome. Ezine's heart ached at the sight of Alice's distress. She gently put Alice into a comforting embrace. Oh, my dear, I'm so sorry. Onika can be difficult, but let's give him a chance. 
He just needs time to realize what is in front of him. Please, don't leave just yet. Give him a little more time and I promise we'll figure this out. Alice nodded against Ezine's shoulder. Though, the thought in her heart remained. She appreciated Ezine's kindness and support, but she wasn't sure how much longer she could stay in a situation that felt so hostile. All right, ma, Alice said softly, pulling back from the hug. I will stay, but only for a little longer. Ezine smiled, relieved that Alice was willing to give it another chance. Thank you, Alice. I know this isn't easy, but I believe things will get better. Later that evening, as the day began to wind down, Ezine decided it was time to take another step in trying to bridge the gap between Alice and Oyeka. She prepared a simple but hearty meal and then approached Alice, who was sitting quietly in her room. Alice, my dear, Ezine began with a gentle smile. Would you mind helping me serve dinner? I think it would be good for Onyeka to see your effort. Alice hesitated but then nodded. Of course, ma. I will do my best. Together, they prepared the meal with Alice dishing out the food onto plates. Once everything was ready, isn't it gently encouraged her? Why don't you take Onyeka's plate to him? It might be a good opportunity to talk. Alice took a deep breath, trying to summon her courage. She picked up the plate and walked down the hallway to Onyeka's room, her heart pounding in her chest. She knocked softly on the door, and when there was no response, she slowly pushed it open. Onyeka was sitting on his bed, scrolling through his phone. He looked up when Alice entered, his expression immediately turning cold. Dinner is ready, Alice said softly, holding out the plate. But Onyeka didn't reach for the food. Instead, he glared at her, his voice dripping with disdain. Why are you doing this? Alice or whatever they call you. Trying to play the perfect little housewife? You are just a cheap local champion. Desperate to marry a rich man and reap where you didn't sow. Alice's heart shattered at his words. She had been trying so hard to be kind, to make things work, but his cruel accusations cut deep. Tears welled up in her eyes and she stood there trembling. I'm not a gold digger. She managed to say, her voice breaking. I just wanted to help. Onyeka scoffed, turning away from her. Just leave my house already. I never asked for any of this. Unable to bear the harshness of his words, Alice fled the room, the place still in her hands. She ran to her own room, tears streaming down her face, and began packing her clothes into her bag. Her heart aching with each movement. She couldn't stay here any longer. Not when Onyeka clearly despised her. Ezine had the commotion and rushed to Alice's side. Her heart breaking when she saw the younger woman's tear streaked face. Alice, what happened? Alice looked up at her, her voice trembling. I can't do this anymore, ma. He hates me. I just want to leave. Ezine moved closer, wrapping her arms around Alice in a comforting embrace. Oh, my dear, I'm so sorry. I promise I will fix this. Just please stay with me until tomorrow. We'll live together if that's what you want. Alice hesitated, but then she nodded, trusting Ezine's words. All right, ma'am, I will stay until tomorrow. That night, Ezine confronted Onyeka once again. Her heart heavy with disappointment. Onyeka, I have decided that Alice and I will leave tomorrow. I won't force you into anything you are not ready for, and I won't bother you about this again. Onyeka's heart sank at her words. He had never seen his mother so serious, so resolute. The thought of her leaving and never bringing up the topic again left him with an unexpected emptiness. It meant that she was giving up, something she had never done before. And worse, it meant that she was deeply hurt by his actions. Mom, wait. Oyeka said, his voice thick with emotion. I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I just, I don't know how to handle this. But if you really think Alice is a good person, maybe I have been too harsh. Ezine's eyes softened as she approached him, placing a hand on his shoulder. Onyeka, all I have ever wanted is for you to be happy. But happiness doesn't always come in the form we expect. Sometimes, we have to open our hearts to possibilities we never considered before. Onyeka looked down, the weight of his mother's words pressing on him. After a long moment, he finally spoke. I'm sorry, mom. I'll give Alice a chance. I'll try to get to know her. 
but I need you to understand that I'm not making any promises beyond that. Ezine smiled, tears of relief welling up in her eyes. That's all I ask, Konyeka. Just give her a chance. That night, after talking with his mother, Onika gathered his thoughts and walked down the hallway to Alice's room. He knocked softly on the door, and after a moment, Alice opened it, looking surprised to see him stand. Alice, can we talk? Onika asked his voice, more gentle than she had ever heard it before. Alice nodded, stepping aside to let him in. They sat down together, and for the first time since she arrived, Onika spoke to her without anger or frustration. I'm sorry for the way I have treated you. Onika began, his voice sincere. I have been unfair, and I shouldn't have called you those names. You didn't deserve that. Alice looked at him, her heart still guarded but touched by his apology. Thank you, Onyeka. I appreciate your words. I know the situation isn't easy for either of us. Onyeka nodded, his gaze meeting hers. I have been stubborn, and I haven't given you a fair chance. I would like to change that. If you are willing to stay a little longer, maybe we could try to get to know each other better. Alice hesitated for a moment, but then she saw the sincerity in his eyes. She knew that this was a significant step forward, and despite her reservations, she was willing to give it a try. All right, Onyeka, Alice said softly, I will stay and we'll see where this goes. The tension between them began to ease. And from that point on, things slowly started to change. Onika made an effort to be kinder, more open, and Alice responded with the same warmth and understanding she had always shown. They spent more time together talking about their lives, their dreams, and their families. Onika began to see Alice not as a village girl, but as a capable and intelligent woman with her own hopes and aspirations. One day, Onika took Alice to meet his friend, Peter, who owned a production company in the city. Peter was impressed by Alice's qualifications and agreed to give her a job. It was the opportunity Alice had been waiting for, and she was thrilled to finally put her education to good use. With time, Ezine decided to return to her town, confident that Alice and Onyeka were on the right path. When she arrived home, she shared the good news with everyone and the entire community rejoiced. Soon after, Onyeka and his family came to formally ask for Alice's hand in marriage. The traditional wedding was a joyous occasion. Filled with love and celebration, Alice moved in with Onyeka and they began their life together, with Alice taking on her new role at the production company. When Alice received her first salary from her new job, she was filled with a deep sense of accomplishment. It wasn't just about the money, it was about the journey she had taken to get to this point. She had worked hard, faced many challenges, and now she was finally reaping the rewards of her efforts. In her joy, she decided to share this moment with Onyeka. That evening, when she returned home, she handed the entire envelope containing her salary to Onyeka. Here, she said, smiling, this is my first salary. I want you to have it. Onyeka was taken aback by her gesture. He had never expected this from her. Alice, are you sure? He asked, looking at the envelope in his hand. You worked hard for this. Alice nodded, her smile unwavering. Yes, I'm sure. You have been so supportive and I want to show my appreciation. Onyeka felt a swell of pride and happiness. It seemed like things were finally going in the right direction between them. Thank you, Alice. This means a lot to me. But as the next month rolled around, things took a different turn. When Alice received her second salary, she didn't hand it over to Onyeka. Instead, she used a portion of it to pay for her siblings' school fees and to support her parents back in Iziki. She also bought some things for the house, food, cleaning supplies, and other essentials. Onyeka noticed the change and wasn't pleased. One evening, he approached Alice as she was putting away the groceries she had bought. Alice, he began, trying to keep his tone calm. I noticed you didn't give me your salary this month. Alice paused, sensing where the conversation was headed. Yes, Onyeka, I need to take care of some things. My siblings' school fees were due, and I wanted to help my parents as well. Onyeka frowned, his frustration growing. I understand that, but you should have at least given me part of it. I think it's only right that you submit at least 60% of your salary to me. Alice looked at him surprised. 60%? Oyeka, I have my own needs too. I'm not just working to hand over my earnings. I want to help my family and I have personal expenses as well. Oyeka's frustration turned into anger. I'm the one who helped you get this job, Alice. You wouldn't be here without me. The least you can do is show some appreciation. 
by contributing more to this household. Alice felt a sting in her heart at his word. She had always appreciated Onyeka's support, but she also believed in maintaining her independence. I'm grateful for your help, Onyeka, but I also need to take care of my responsibilities. I'm not refusing to contribute, but I can't give you most of my salary. The tension between them grew with each passing day. Onyeka couldn't let go of the idea that Alice should be handing over a large portion of her earnings to him. Alice, on the other hand, stood firm in her belief that she had the right to manage her money as she saw fit. After several months of constant nagging and argument, the situation escalated. The tension finally boiled over and Alice made the difficult decision to leave the house. She found a small apartment closer to her workplace and moved out. She hoped the distance would help them both cool down and think more clearly. When Ezine heard about the situation, she was deeply disappointed in Onyeka. She confronted him. Her voice filled with a mix of sadness and frustration. Onyeka, why are you behaving like this? You are acting just like your father did. Don't you see how much you are hurting Alice? But Onyeka, stubborn and proud, refused to listen. I'm not doing anything wrong, mom. I just want what's fair. Ezine shook her head. Her heart heavy with disappointment. Fair? Onyeka, fairness. It's not about control. It's about understanding and respect. You're pushing away the best thing that has ever happened to you. Despite his mother's words, Onyeka remained resolute. He refused to make amends. Convinced that he was right. But fate had his own way of teaching lessons. One evening, while driving home from work, Onyeka was involved in a serious car accident. He had been carrying some women from work, trying to impress them. But when the accident happened, they all abandoned him and fled, leaving him alone and injured. The hospital staff found Alice's contact information as his emergency contact and called her. Without hesitation, Alice rushed to the hospital. Her heart pounding with worry. When she arrived, she found Onyeka unconscious, bruised and bandaged. Seeing him in such a vulnerable state brought tears to her eyes. When Onyeka finally regained consciousness and saw Alice sitting by his bedside, he was overwhelmed with guilt. Alice, he whispered, his voice weak. I'm so sorry for everything. I've been a fool. I hurt you deeply and I don't deserve your forgiveness. Alice looked at him, her eyes soft with concern. Onyeka, I'm just glad you are okay. We can talk about everything later. Right now, you need to rest and be better. Weeks later, after Onyeka was discharged from the hospital and was able to stand on his feet again, the truth came out. Alice was pregnant even before she had left the house. This revelation brought both families together. They realized that their differences needed to set aside for the sake of the new life that was coming. A meeting was arranged and both families gathered to make peace and settle their differences. With a sincere apologies and promises to do better, Onyeka and Alice decided to start afresh. The love they once had began to rekindle. This time stronger and built on the foundation of mutual respect and understanding. And so, with their family's support, Alice and Onyeka moved forward together, ready to face whatever challenges life would bring. In time, they welcomed their baby into the world, and the joy that filled their home was a testament to the strength they had found in each other. In the end, they all lived happily ever after, having learned that love, respect, and understanding were the keys to a strong and lasting relationship. The story of Alice and Onyeka teaches us that love and respect are very important in any relationship. When two people care about each other, they will listen to each other's needs and work together. In the story, Alice wanted to help her family with the money she earned, but Onyeka wanted her to give him most of her salary. This caused problems between them because they didn't agree on what was fair. The lesson here is that in any relationship, both people need to understand and respect each other's choices. It's not right to control someone just because you help them. Instead, talking things out and being kind to one another can solve many problems. In the end, Onika learned that being stubborn and trying to control Alice only hurt their relationship. It was only after he saw how much she still cared for him, even after he made mistakes, that he realized the importance of love, respect and working together. This story reminds us that we should always be kind and listen to those we care about. Thank you so much. For watching this amazing story about alice and her family on african stories if you liked it and felt inspired with her journey please show your support by clicking the like button sharing with your friends and leaving a comment below to see more interesting stories and learn about different cultures 
subscribe to African Stories, and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss a new story. Your support means a lot and helps us bring more stories to you. Until we meet again, stay connected, stay inspired, and keep smiling.